Let's go through this diagram for the geology of fracking. Go ahead and fill in your diagram as I do the one on the video here. So we have some layers under the earth and they're not to scale, just so you know. So we've learned about topsoil, so the topsoil would be here and the topsoil is um, a thin layer in most places compared to the next layers. Again, these are not to scale, so just be aware that these layers can be a lot uh, deeper than what it's showing here in this um, diagram. So in the next layer, we have most of the usable aquifers. And um, so normally when we draw out aquifers, we would draw out um, several layers of aquifers that would run through um, the ground here. You'd have some higher aquifers, you'd have some lower aquifers. Um, but for this diagram, we don't need to draw all the aquifers. You just need to know that near the surface are most of the aquifers that are usable by people. There are some that are deeper that people have dr drilled wells to, but when you drill to deeper aquifers, it is more expensive. So most people are going to use aquifers closer to the surface. And then we have what's called an overlying sedimentary covering. All right, so this is the cover over the next layer. The next layer um, and sedimentary rock cover. Um, the next layer is a shale cap. So we'll call this the shale cap. The shale cap is porous, but impermeable. So what that means is that porous means um, that there are pores and things can fill up between the rocks but can't move through them. So permeable means that fluids or um, gas or, or whatever can move through the layer. Imperviable with an M means it can't. So this means it will not let oil and gas move through it. So it, it seals off the oil and gas. Okay, so now let's talk about where our oil and gas are. So over here we have our natural gas in this layer. And then below it, we have our oil, okay? And below it, we have our sandstone. Now, this, the sandstone here is porous and permeable. So let's talk about that for a minute. And so this, is all one layer. So um, the natural gas, oil, and sandstone is all one layer here. And I know that's a little confusing um, because it looks like this is a layer, that's a layer, but it's not. So this all together, this sandstone is one layer and the oil and natural gas is found in the sandstone. But because it is lighter in density, it's going to rise to the top of a layer. And see where this is going up? It has the highest um, place here, and so it's gonna rise to the highest place in that layer. So oil and gas, um, let me put that up here. They are lighter and move to the top of the layer. And so I'm going to put that to natural gas and oil and you can see natural gas is less dense there so it's going to move to the top of this layer here, this porous and permeable sandstone. 
So permeable means things can go through it, and so the oil and natural gas move through that sandstone and then accumulate here. Then down here we have impermeable shale. Shale is still a kind of sedimentary rock. And shale does break apart easily. This layer we can say is organic rich. So organic means from a living thing. That's the biological term. I know we talk about organic farming and organic farming means um, no synthetic pesticides or fertilizers, but in this instance, we mean living things. So these are ancient living things. So remember fossil fuels are ancient living things that were buried in heat and pressure over time turns them into fossil fuels. And so that's fossil fuels come from living old dead living things. So we say it's organic rich. We can also say that it is gas rich. So when we do fracking for natural gas, we want um, this shale layer. So in a traditional oil and gas well, it's going to look like this up here. So you've probably seen these around town. Um, this is a pump to pump up. And then in some places, they this is kind of an old fashioned looking well here that they build over the gas. So this is more of what we've used in the past 50 years. This is kind of before 50 years ago. Um, not strictly, but I'm just kind of point out what you may have seen. And so let's talk about this. So traditional oil and gas so traditionally these oil and gas wells are used in porous and permeable layers so we have drilled down to where we can extract it. And <clears throat> so let's just color this a little bit. When you have colors, it helps you uh, memorize it better. So we can kind of um, color the natural gas yellow. It's not necessarily yellow, usually it's clear. Um, oil is black, so we can color this layer black and that helps us remember. Um, and then our sandstone is, is actually more of a light gray, but we can kind of color that in. And then our aquifers are up here, most of them, not all of them. So that we'll talk about that when um, we talk about fracking. And um, so traditionally, when we dr drill down through the rocks and we hit natural gas and oil, the pressure is released. And so you've got all of this pressure building up here under the rock. And when it's released, the natural gas comes up, the oil comes up through the well and then out. So if you've seen old movies where oil just squirts out until they cap it and then they can start containing it, um, that's kind of what happens, but I'm actually not going to leave these here because you're not going to see spurting oil out. We know how to not let that happen anymore. So I'm going to wipe this part out for you. Okay. Um, and then this is a pump that helps get it out of the ground a little better too when the pressure is, is gone and we still have um, oil to get out of the ground. All right, so that's what these things are, traditional oil and gas wells, and they're still drilled and used today. But in the past decade or so, we have a more modern type of well. So a modern well with fracking techniques.
Okay, so modern well is very low to the ground. So when people do fracking um, on land, it, it, they're just small things compared to an old, very tall well. Um, and so they're used in impermeable material. And this is a new technology which has vastly opened up the resources of fossil fuels in the United States and other places too. So one of the reasons why coal is being phased out and natural gas is, is replacing it for a lot of our electricity um, is that we now can extract a huge amount of natural gas through fracking. We can also extract oil this way too through fracking um, in oil shale. Um, but a lot of it being done in the country right now and the fracking that people are talking about is done for natural gas. So let's go down here and talk about what, or draw out what happens. Um, oh, uh, a couple other things. This is called a reservoir rock. And this is called a source rock. So originally when all these fossil fuels were made, the original organic sources were down in this layer here. And then as things shift around through plate tectonics and earthquakes and things, um, sometimes the layers uh, get moved around. Um, okay, so what happens is that they send um, fluid down and then also um, so they pump up the natural gas, not in the same tube, I didn't draw a separate tube, but what they do is they pump down uh, water um, and or chemicals to fracture the shale. In oil extraction, it's called secondary extraction of oil. And so primary extraction would be the regular way, and this would be secondary extraction when we're talking about oil um, and natural gas to fracture the shale, and then oil and gas is released. Okay, so they send it down and then they let it go and the pressure of the water or chemicals cracks the rock. So it kind of comes out of um, the pipe and it just cracks all of these rocks. And so the rocks that contain and won't allow the natural gas to move through it because it's imperviable, so you can't move through it. Um, now there's cracks, there's fractures for the natural gas to now move into the pipe and up and out. And so that's the technique of fracking. You have to know the geology of how our regular fossil fuels work and how our fracking works and why these are down here or these are um, stuck by a shale cap and then um, here, this is impermeable shale, and we crack it to release it, the gas out of the shale. So everything that we wrote on here is important. So one of the problems with fracking is that it, if there are aquifers that are near here, then um, they can, the gas can crack and the fissures can go into an aquifer and so it can contaminate people's drinking water who have wells that go into um, aquifers. Okay, so here's another important thing to know. If there's no impermeable shale cap, then you end up with um, tar or oil sands.
Okay, so in some places we have seeping oil. A close place is uh, Carpinteria Beach has oil that oozes out and so we don't have this impermeable shale cap there. Um, in some places um, it has, now you have tar and oil sands and there is some debate geologically as to what formed them. So you have uh, tar sands or oil sands, these are synonyms for the same thing. Um, some think that um, the crude oil was allowed to, it, it didn't have a, a cap, so it, it oozed up to the surface and the lighter materials evaporated and left behind sticky heavy tar mixed in with sand. Um, that is one of the hypotheses as to what created um, the um, the Alberta tar and oil sands. All right, um, some of the problems with this is that it can create earthquakes. And so Oklahoma is a place where there is a huge amount of fracking. It is also a place that now has um, earthquakes and they never really did before. So that's a drawback um, to fracking. The benefits of fracking are that it has allowed us to switch from coal to natural gas, and natural gas is the cleanest of the fossil fuels. Um, and so that's a good thing. It has brought the price of energy down. Um, it has also provided jobs. So those are the benefits of fracking. Um, and, but these are some of the downfalls of fracking. All right, so that's it.